Welcome geometry students to part two of geometric reflections. It's a type of transformation uh, and this is most likely your chapter nine. But we're going to be talking about how to write a rule um, or the proper notation for reflections. So let's talk real quick. I don't think this particular CUDA worksheet will have it. It will just want you to put it in like reflection across x equals negative three like that. But the actual notation is something like this. So we're going to put R for reflection. When it was a translation, it was something like this for um, a translation. So we're going to be using R for reflection. And then you write the line that you're reflecting across. So you put the line name here. So you're going to write the line name. And then you put the pre-image here in parentheses. Okay. And technically, you'd set this equal to your image. So whatever your image is, that is what is happening. You take your pre-image, you apply the rule, which is a reflection across a certain line, and that is the new shape after the transformation. So that's the general format for it. I'll get into how to do that in just a second, a little bit more clearly. But first, let's figure out where is our line of reflection? That's the toughest part for these exercises, is finding out where the line of reflection is. Now, if you don't have a real uh, good visual sense, a lot of students uh, of mine can just do this uh, visually and they see, oh, clearly it's being uh, divided across this particular line. They know where it goes because they can visually see it. But if you're not one of those people, there is a way to counteract that. One of the ways is to take two of your points. For example, I'm just going to take F and F prime. Okay, They need to be the, uh, the pre-image and this one's the pre-image and they need to be the image, okay? The corresponding points for that. So if you choose F, choose F prime. Don't choose like K and then F prime. That wouldn't make any sense. So make sure you choose a pre-image and then the image and the corresponding one. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna label those two points. So this one is zero comma three, and then this one for the image is zero comma one. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find the midpoint of those two. So the midpoint, I'm going to change this color actually, change this to purple style, purple. Okay, so now we want to find the midpoint of that. Why do we want to find the midpoint of these two uh, points from the pre-image and the image? Because that will tell us the halfway point, okay, where that line goes. Okay, so it will t help us indicate where is that halfway point because we know that halfway point um, is going to help us find where that line of reflection goes. Because remember, line of reflection is equal on both sides, uh, the distance from the pre-image and the post-image. So first we need to revisit the midpoint formula, which is x1 plus x2 divided by 2 for our x coordinate, and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2 for our y coordinate. So we might want to, if you don't remember this, you might want to label x2, y2 for these two things. So um, if I were to do this hastily, I'm gonna sh you'll get what I'm doing in just a second, but I'm going to put uh, uh, 0, and then I'm going to put 3, and then I'm going to put oops, um, 0 plus uh, 1 plus, and then divide by 2. All I'm doing is I'm inputting my x1, y1, x2, y2 in for um, my values for my midpoint formula. So for my x value, I'm going to get 0 plus 0 over 2, which is just 0. And then for my y, I'm going to get 3 plus 1, which is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So this is my new midpoint between those two. Okay. Now, this isn't a guarantee of where my line of reflection is. I mean, I don't technically know which way it's going. Now, for these Worksheets, generally, they're going to be either vertical or horizontal. So if you can see, obviously, it's horizontal. Just visually, you can tell that it's horizontal. Go ahead and put, okay, now I know this is over the, the line y equals 2. But let's say you didn't know that. What you would need to do here is find another two points. So I'm just going to choose j and j prime and repeat this process for finding the midpoint. So here we have, what is this, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is negative 5, comma, Three, and this is negative 5 comma 1. So if we were to apply the midpoint formula here, we would have negative 5 plus a negative 5 uh, x1 plus x2 
divided by two. And then I would have uh, three plus one divided by two. So I would have negative 10 divided by two comma four divided by two. And this would be negative five comma two. So that is right here. If I connect these two points, that is my line, okay? You need two points for a line, so you can repeat the midpoint formula twice to get your line of reflection. This is a horizontal line. If you want, you can find the slope between these two, okay? And that's another thing if you want, but clearly it's a horizontal line. It has a y-intercept of two, so my line of reflection has a y-intercept of two, y equals mx plus b. Let me move this up. Okay, my y-intercept is zero. My slope is zero because it goes up zero over zero or over one, whatever you want. Okay, slope, again, is just a, as a reminder in case you're having trouble with that. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So our slope is gonna be zero because it doesn't go up at all. So it's gonna be zero X uh, plus my Y-intercept, which is not zero, sorry, it's actually uh, two. That's where it crosses the y-axis. So y equals two is my line of reflection, which we kind of alluded to earlier. But now I need to write this in proper notation. This CUDA worksheet is gonna have you write reflection over y equals two. But I'm gonna write it like this. y equals, and then you write your line of reflection like this, y equals two. My line of, uh, that's my line of reflection, y equals two. And then I put in parentheses my pre-image which is like this, uh, J, V, F, K. And then this is equal to my post image. Sorry, not my post image, my image. And we need to put it in the same order just with the primes. Okay, now we kind of got the idea. This is my technical notation. If you just want to put reflection over Y equals two, that's good for this worksheet. We're gonna skip that one for now. Let's repeat that process. Now, let's go ahead and do this one. Okay, so if we're gonna do this one, you can tell this one's a little bit different already, but a couple things I want you to know. Number one, if we wanted to find the midpoint between these two, you're gonna see something a little strange happen. We'd have, this is the point zero comma one, this is the point one comma zero. So we'd have zero for our midpoint, zero plus one over two for our X value, and then uh, zero plus uh, sorry, one plus zero over two for my y value. So it'd be one half comma one half. So that's not great. That's where my, um, sorry, it should be negative one. So this would be minus one. That'd be a negative one half. So my uh, light of reflection has that weird location there, which isn't super helpful because it's not a y-intercept or anything. But we should take a, a quick note at two things. One, we could apply the midpoint formula here with u's and we get this is one comma one and this is negative one comma negative one. So if we were to do it with this one, negative one plus one over two and then negative one plus one over two, we'd get zero comma zero, which is right here, which is great because that's our y-intercept, okay? And if we wanted, we could find another point and you see here, V and V prime and D and D prime are both on the same spot. What does that mean? That means their midpoint is gonna be in the same spot. So we can see here, we have two points for our line. This is gonna be our line. We already know the slope, or sorry, the y-intercept, mx plus b. We already know the y-intercept is zero, okay? The slope is down one, two, three, over one, two, three. So that's down three, over three x equals y that simplifies to y equals negative one x plus zero which is y equals negative x so that is my line of reflection if i were to write it in this notation it would be r y equals negative x my pre-image which is uh t u v a uh, t u d v T U D V, and then my post, not my post image, my actual image, which is T prime, U prime, D prime, V prime. Again, a little bit overcomplicated uh, for this last notation part, but that is the actual notation. Um, but I'm gonna simplify it and just talk about the line of reflection here on out, okay? 
So that's a tough one just because it's on a, a diagonal. But whenever you have uh, the line of the image and the pre-image on the same location, that gives a big uh, giveaway. That's where the line of reflection is. Okay, here we go with this one. We could fi find these two uh, coordinates here, three comma one, and then three comma negative one. Um, but clearly, and we could do the, the midpoint formula here, but clearly what you're gonna see is the midpoint is gonna be here, okay? Also just think, all right, what's the distance between these two? This is probably the easier way to go. What are the distance between these two points? One, two, three, four. And it's not on a diagonal, if it's just vertical, that's a lot easier. So this example, one, two, three, four, five, six. It was a vertical distance of six. You could just divide that by two and go down. When it's diagonal, it's not as easy, okay? Because we had to go diagonal to each other between the points. So that's not as clear cut, but this one's clear cut. If we're looking for where the line of reflection is, we're just gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then divide that in two, which is four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's four, this is four, and we get to our clear line of reflection right here. And that line is y equals zero. So this is a reflection over y equals zero. Let's apply that same principle to this one. Here we're gonna count the distance between the two, the image and the uh, pre-image, one, two, three, four. So that means we need to go two units and two units because that's half, half the distance, midpoint. There we are. Let's do that again a second time just to double check it's not a weird funky line. We go one, we go, uh, sorry, my mistake. We're gonna go one, two units between the two. So we go one and one and we get to our middle ground here. Half of two is one, and there is our vertical line. So this is a vertical line at negative one, negative two, negative three, x equals negative three. So that's reflection over x equals negative three. Let's keep doing this process so we get the hang of it. You're probably like, why didn't you just talk about this earlier? Well, I, want it, I like talking about the mathematical principle first and then giving you the shortcuts later. So sorry if I wasted your time, but that's what I like to do. So we have, uh, four, so we're gonna go two units and two units to get to our middle spot right here. And then let's count uh, this guy here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna go four and four to get to our middle spot and connect the lines here. It's gonna be a vertical line right on the Y axis, which is technically X equals zero. So reflection over the Y axis or X equals zero. This one's diagonal. So this is the one that I said, okay, this is gonna be a little tricky because notice how we can't count straight down or straight to the right to get to the other one. So this is where we definitely need to apply the midpoint formula as I talked about earlier. And they don't share coordinates, so we're definitely needing to find that. So we're gonna talk about our u's first. Those are uh, close. We have negative three comma uh, negative one for one of the coordinates. And then we have negative one comma negative three for the other coordinate. So we're gonna add our x's together, divide by two, and then we're gonna add our y's together. And you're probably like, oh, actually, let me change it just so you're not screaming and yelling at me. Delete. So let's make it negative one plus a negative three there. I'm sure you guys feel better now. So we have negative four over two, comma, negative four over two. That's negative two, comma, negative two. So there's one of our points for our line of reflection. So we just need to do this process one more time. I think the Z's are gonna be easier since they're already on an axis, both of them. That's the point negative four comma zero comma negative four. And the other one is negative four comma zero. So this one should be pretty easy. We have negative four comma, sorry, negative four plus zero divided by two. And then we have zero plus a negative four divided by two. So we get negative four over two comma negative four over two, that'd be negative two comma negative two. That's our other point, something's wrong. Negative two comma negative two. Oh, it's the same spot. So actually that didn't help us at all. Uh, negative two over two. So, um, wow. So we have to actually do this a third time. That, that midpoint didn't help us. So let's do H. And when we do that, um, what we're gonna get here, and I'm gonna fast forward is another thing you can do is you can count diagonal distances. I didn't really talk about that, but this one's a little tricky because it's gonna be in the middle. 
Mm, maybe we should do D instead. Let's see if we can have a diagonal distance between D. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so actually we can do... This is a special situation because this is either the line y equals x or y equals negative x here. We had y equals negative x for that one, so I'm guessing it's uh, it might be the same or different. But we can count the distance and then find, so this was a distance of eight between the d's. Let me try that again. This was a distance of eight between the d's, so I'm gonna go half of that, which is here, four units here, and then four units here, diagonal distance, and that's this point here, so zero, zero. You could have done this the traditional way, find the coordinates and find the midpoint, but what we're gonna get is we're gonna get this line here. It has a y-intercept, y equals mx plus b, of zero, and it has a slope of one, so we have one x plus zero, that's y equals x. So we have reflection over y equals x for the number 12. I know this was a lot, but if you guys understand this, you understand basically all of reflections, and you're good to go for your whole chapter. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to tune in next time to West Explains Best for more helpful tips, especially in geometry. Take care. Thanks for watching.